Um, so welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Grant Withers. I'm uh, the co-chair of the Arts Committee at the, uh, the Stride Burnaby Arts Festival. And uh, I'm very delighted to welcome you tonight to Making Art and Living Artfully with my partner in crime tonight, Jane Appleby. Wave, Jane. Hello. There's Jane. Oh, letting in someone else there. Oh, I got it first, Sui. And Burnaby neighbor at that. I grew up. Yes. We live yeah. now. Yeah, another Burnaby, uh, a Burnaby uh, artist here. Um, I want to, to give you a bit of a heads up of, of a what, to, what to expect tonight. Um, we're, we're going to be trying to kind of explaining a bit about what this title means, um, you know, making art and living artfully. There's, there's a bit of unwrapping to do of, of those, uh, some of those terms. Uh, Jane and I have had many conversations recently full of passion and interest and, and uh, uh, you know, cheering each other on and, and really, uh, you know, we're trying to be advocates for art and artful living. And uh, hopefully tonight uh, we'll be sort of in inviting you behind the scenes, sharing with you some of the questions and conversations that we as artists and as creatives have all the time. And we kind of mull over these regularly. And when Jay and I get together, uh, you know, we talk at length about these things. So I'm hoping that it's uh, kind of inspiring for you and it, and it helps you kind of wrap your head around uh, what art is, what it means and what it means to you, what it means to the world. Um, they're, they can be very deep subjects, they can be very kind of surface, surface things that uh, and I hope you just take away from it something tonight, something that kind of gets you thinking. Um, I, I thank you guys for having your mics on mute for now. Uh, we'll definitely open those up a little later on, but it, it does help uh, uh, ma maximize the auto, audio for, for our talk tonight. Um, yes, yeah, so do add questions to the, to the chat window, and we have allotted some time uh, at the end to look at those questions and, and answer them uh, if they haven't been covered already during, during our talk. So we'll definitely uh, grab on a little later too. Um, now, I mentioned that I'm a, a, a Burnaby artist myself. My background is in uh, uh, photography, so I'm, a, a, I'm an experimental photographic artist, uh, trying a lots, of, lots of things actually. I, I might also call myself a multidisciplinary artist, but lately I'm trying to focus on the, the photography and the lens-based work. And I wanted to give Jane a chance to, to introduce yourself and tell us that, Jane, tell us a bit about uh, your, your place in the arts and in Burnaby. Yeah. I think I've uh, been an artist all my life. Um, I didn't realize I was an artist till in grade two, probably when a, a, a teacher asked me to help decorate her room and, and make trees. So I think trees have always been something I've been uh, passionate about drawing and painting and exploring. And it's always ended up in my work. And I love to be around nature. Uh, it's, it's just something that um, I do a lot of. I, I've become probably exclusively a plein air painter in the last five years, even some of my abstracts done outdoors, and now most recently taking that information and making larger expressive work, which I call lyrical expressions, uh, because often I feel there's this music, this movement through uh, nature and through my work that ends up in it. Um, and and it, it's funny that, uh, I don't know if you know this, Grant, but I used to love photography as well. And I wanted to, yeah. <laughs> You know, I went and did interesting work in the dark room and um, tried to do creative things, something new, something that alive and the spirit in me to keep doing something investigative and 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 share that. Uh, and then color called me to and, and the paint and, and how it moved. And I was just torn between the two, but I had to realize that I can't really do both. And, and if I really wanted to hone in that I would take on the, the painting ventures. And that's what I've been doing uh, most mostly and, and writing about it and then teaching. So I do teach workshops in drawing and painting for children and adults. And I've enjoyed that and been part of inspiration. If you guys notice in the chat window, Jane has added some uh, links. I did, I did as well, but Jane has quite a few uh, pies um, that she's, she's baking at the moment in terms of art and, and uh, helping other artists and, and putting her out, art out into the world. So do take some time to make note of those um, those links and check those out another time. We'll talk a bit more about what Jane's up to uh, in a little bit. Grant, just sorry, uh, mm -hmm. for the people that just joined in, they, it won't, the chat would not appear the way it was, so you guys might have to repost those links. Oh, okay. Yes, just so you. Thank you. you so it's a, it's a- Thank you, Subi. All right, but I put my stuff up there one more time. 
Mine's there again. Gene, super. Thanks for that, Gene. I didn't know that. Awesome. Um, so tonight's uh, session was advertised as a conversation and Jane and I are hoping to make it that way. We've had many of them in the past and sometimes we've said, or I've said, why aren't we recording this? Um, and uh, I hope that tonight will be uh, as interesting and as uh, engaging and thought provoking as some of our conversations in the past. We've, we've got a few topics we wanna make sure we cover. So it's not gonna go off on too many tangents, I hope. Um, but I'd like to, to actually open up a little, open up uh, the, uh, the conversation or kind of throw in my two cents worth to see where it goes as Jane uh, joins in in a bit. Um, something that I've been uh, talking about a lot is uh, that I believe that uh, art is everywhere. And we often rely too much on artists. You know, some of the people here are artists. I feel like I'm an artist. Um, but society in general, I think, relies too much on artists to provide the art in their lives. And while that's great, it's very self-serving if I, if I kind of promote that, but I'm also an advocate for uh, artful living and, and living an artful life. And we'll talk a bit more about that. It's really um, bringing art, uh, instead of taking time out uh, of your busy life to, in, to look at art, to... Uh, go to a concert to engage in the arts in that way. What, I'm, what we're trying to, to say in our, in our sort of living artfully uh, philosophy is that we want, we want people to realize that art is around them all the time. And in fact, it's inside them too. Jane, Jane is going to touch on that in a bit. But it really is all around us. Uh, we um, have several visual artists on display in uh, 10 different venues around Burnaby Heights as part of the Stride Festival. Um, but many of those venues themselves and the, the, the merchants nearby are filled with uh, practitioners of the arts. We have, uh, you know, I'm just off the top of my head, I'm thinking of uh, Chez Christophe uh, chocolate uh, bakery there that is all about chocolate. The culinary arts are, are very creative. Uh, there, there's the Adele Ray Florist, who is one of our, our sponsoring venues. These are, are, are creative, uh, visual, uh, sort of inspirational type businesses. And these people are living, uh, living art every single day when they go to work. Um, but you can even take a step back from that. And it doesn't have to be something that you've trained for. It doesn't have to be something that has been taught to you. You never even have to pick up a pencil uh, to, to have art around you. So I'm, I'm, part of my goal is that uh, you'll sort of walk away tonight thinking, kind of looking around you a little differently and uh, recognizing that, that there's art uh, all around. So Grant, can I ask you, has the camera helped you zone in on those particular things? Because you're looking through a different lens. That's Is a really good question, yeah. Uh, I'd have to say yes. Uh, I, I get into a bit of a, uh, a, a blissful state when I'm out with the camera, whether I'm looking through it at the moment or not, I, I'm kind of tuned in. And yeah, I notice things a lot more um, uh, uh, that art or that and it doesn't, I'm not just talking about beauty or, or beautiful patterns or things that might otherwise show up on a canvas or something. That's not even what I'm talking about, but it's, it's connections, it's meanings, it's, uh, you know, patterns, patterns in life for sure. Do you think they're alivened when you have your camera with you? I'm just thinking of the fact that when I have my sketchbook and brush just with me, mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm more open to kind of working the way I have through art, through my art, and working that way through that particular moment or day, and, and you walk through and you receive this kind of art. It does, yeah, it does, you know, doing, you know, being out there ready to, to take a photograph, uh, things are amplified a little bit for sure. But I even like to think that even if I don't have my camera with me, which isn't all that often, I'm still tuned into that. Um, it might not be as, as intense, but I think it's, it's spilled over into many other parts of my life. And it's, you know, I've never been, you know, I guess until recently, I've never been one to meditate. I haven't been one to be sort of really connect, you know, believe that I had a connection with my inner self and really wanted to explore that. But practicing art and being very visually aware and uh, connecting with people, you know, has kind of made me 
uh, more open to those uh, those journeys. They said awareness. I think that's the key to to art. We, when we become aware of a need or aware of beauty or aware of person or something that just catches our eye because I'm visual, but it could yeah. be our our ears, music is so moving, and and it's I guess I just always find it fascinating what has moved me, and and that's the experiences I bring. Um, to, to my work and I'm safe to do it there. So I'm just curious if that, that sort of has been a place safe to explore and then it, it ends up being with you in, in all your instances in life. You mentioned safety, that's, that's a big one. Um, okay. <laughs> I know, I know uh, a lot of artists might, uh, I, and I went through it too, uh, might go through a, uh, an imposter syndrome where you're feeling judged, you're judging your own work or judging your own self. Um, am I good enough? Is this actually art? All these really big questions. Um, but if you, I think if you're really kind of genuine and honest with, with the fact that it's a journey that you're on as opposed to some bar you're trying to meet, then I think safety and confidence can, can come from that as, a, as a, both a practicing artist, but also as someone who's uh, perhaps initially uncomfortable about sort of opening up to those broader uh, uh, perceptions of, of art, artfulness around them. And do you think as a child, you had more freedom to do that in? And, and, it, and it's something that we build on through life, like we get more and more of it? I, I've wondered that. I'm, I'm, the, the, uh, ap the apprehension, you mean? Of, yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, when we're, when we're kids, uh, you know, up, up until probably, and I don't know if it's the same with now, current generation, but when you're kids, you know, everything is, is amazing. You just want to touch everything. I mean, first of all, you want to put everything in your mouth and then you want to touch everything and then you want to build it and, and tear it apart. But then, mm -hmm. yeah, when you're a teenager, you start to get uh, a little self-conscious and then you start really sort of getting into a bit of a shell. Um, I feel like I've broken, broken out of that entirely. And uh, I'm, I feel, uh, you know, in a way, not just confident, but brave to just... I mean, I feel like I'm an expert at doing what I do because it's only me doing it. No one else does what I do. So how can I possibly uh, judge, uh, you know, or, or compare what I'm doing to someone else and think it's not as good? So when, can, when did that sort of switch over where you felt that you had something that is your own? Like, did you, you knew enough about the materials that you, that you worked through many, many difficulties in it that you found something that's your own? I'm just curious. It, it wasn't that long ago, actually. I mean, I remember I was speaking with um, a sort of a life coach uh, to try to navigate through some of these these issues. Uh, life coach, business coach, mm -hmm. and that may have started me on that path of you know putting the imposter syndrome behind me and moving forward uh, with with some more confidence. So maybe, and that was I think about five or six years ago, um, and I've been. I consider myself a creative person and an artist for, for many, many years, longer than that. But to yes. really kind of feel that I'm, I'm on a, uh, a, a path with no clear... And you're okay with that. Destination. And I'm totally okay with that. Totally okay. Yeah. I'm curious how many of our, our listeners, you know, have that kind of difficulty to trust in going their own route. You know, this is what I, I challenge mm -hmm. our listeners to think about. It's always... We, we want to please, of course, we, we enjoy other people's work and we want to have the same with our work. And their time, I think it takes um, artful living, like learning from life, things don't always work out. There's things you have to work on, things you have to be aware and learn and build on to, to make something new with and be influenced by so many other things and, and try to keep it positive perhaps. But I'm just curious if that is something that we, we all struggle with um, and, it, and it just takes reminding each other that it's possible to keep moving forward in a direction that is our own, but it does include everyone else too in, mm. in various ways. And I think that for me, that's what makes it doable. It's even though I might be doing my art in solitude, I know it's influenced by so many other artful experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other people's art or the way they've uh, solved problems or even like the way garbage is picked up so efficiently. And I've, I've always wondered about like mundane tasks, if, how much we learn from that, how much 
creativity we can practice in those and not put those aside as not being art. Uh, and, and so I look at those things personally myself, like every little aspect of life can have a, 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 an openness to, to being um, artful. What is artful? That's the whole <laughs> next question, right? What is you, artful living? Are we, are we answering it by just questioning it, really? You, you touched on the, uh, the, some you know, mundane things we see around us and, and questioning whether art touches that. And yeah, it's the, uh, the creative solutions and the, the problem solving that, that many of us go through day to day with big challenges and small challenges. Some of those things, I think, fall into that artful living uh, realm. Uh, another way to think of it is that, uh, and I, I actually want to read you something that I, that I Here, came up with once. Uh, the tools of creativity are within reach for everyone. Those whom we call artists simply hold them in their hands all of the time. Uh, so when we're talking about, when I'm talking about, and I think if I can speak for Jane as well, when we're talking about artful living and building artful living into your life, we're talking about using the same tools um, and thinking about uh, a creative endeavor or creative challenge uh, with, with a certain set of tools there, but applying those same tools and the same way of thinking in our everyday lives. And I honestly think that opens up um, more joy. I think you'd be, you know, you, you'd love deeper. You'll, you'll be more inclined to dance in public when you're you know, <laughs> maybe feeling shy once before. Um, you're, it's a, it, art, art and artful living is about uh, a different way of uh, thinking, uh, a clearer way of seeing the world. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know? And is it open to the other then? Is that really what it, the other person, because we feel it's sort of individual and it is, I believe we each have sort of a gift that we can grow, the color or sense or music or even patience, I don't know. <laughs> um, some, some artwork takes patience, some, you know, uh, but yeah, I'm just wondering if, if, um, no, I forgot what I just said, but my question. You're I talking about it. opening up to the other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, it, it, we're talking, you mentioned about, uh, uh, working in, kind of in isolation or in solitude as a, as a sole artist, but there is, is a, uh, if you realize that there's, there are bigger connections at work then that can build confidence and open up one's perspective so you're not missing other things around you that are uh, important or relevant or uh, just you know interesting that that can influence influence you and you, you may not have realized that before yeah, yeah. yeah. and what do you think about your work what about you you're, you have a poetry zone coming up people write and i not usually consider myself a writer same but, here same here um it when i took the time to just try to say a few words about what I actually do. I got more and more aware of what I was doing and, and building on it. And it made me hone in and, and feel confident about what I'm doing because I had a word for it. Even the, the word we held up in our opening night, you know, passion. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering how that came into your practice. Because to me, that's artful living. You're writing about it. You're speaking about it. And that gives it to the other as well, because somebody will read it or you might just, I mean, it's still, I think it still goes forth from, from that inner to some, something outward. Well, I, I've been asked, you know, what, what have you been doing or how, how has your creative practice changed during uh, the isolation that has been COVID? And while I've done a few little photographic things, the, the writing and the, and the poetry has actually been uh, a really great uh, place to kind of channel my energy and, and really question um, how art um, or, or my questions what I believe art is and um, it's it's that's where I got started on this artful artful living um, idea I think I'd been doing it for a long time but yeah. ha having um, the opportunity to uh, to write about it um, just almost like a, as, a, as a journal is how that started. And then words started, started rhyming and I was like, oh, wait a minute, where is this going? Um, so in some of, my, some of my pieces that I've put out in the, the Stride Art uh, Poetry Zone came from, from that period of sort of introspection and of exploration about, about what art is. 
Um, and it's, it has helped me kind of navigate a bit uh, or feel like I'm navigating through this, uh, through this um, COVID time. But I think it's also really helping me focus on what my art means to me. And, and uh, I've, I've realized that I'm, I'm making my art for me. I'm not, not, I'm not making my art for you. I'm making it for me, but you're invited. So I'm, it, I'm, it's really helped me uh, sort of sharpen my, sharpen my senses a little bit and help me with my purpose. Mm-hmm. How is, how, have you been still very busy uh, with, your, with your practice during this time? Oh, yes. Um, it's interesting, almost, almost more. Um, and I just got out to paint as much as I could. And then um, writing even in a newsletter about my latest piece, it just helps to keep moving forward to the next piece because I know I'm sharing it in some way that way as well. And yeah, it, it's, it's, it's good to put um, reflection, time for reflection on your work, hmm. um, I think into living and, and let that speak to you too. And, and more so than even like the critics, you know, we, we, we could put our work out there and into shows and, and all those rejections and things that come along. I think those you start to become just as part of the process. It's not something that should affect your work. And I think I'm just sharing that because I think that's always a hard emotional aspect to our work to, to not be appreciated for what, what we see in it. But um, if, if, I, if I've learned to put that aside, like including during a time when you can't share it as much, it's just, it's, it's interesting when we have limitations and I think those can actually help us in finding our own uh, true path so I think we need to be open to those times and 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 not say I can't do anything because to me artful living means I can like a little engine that could you know Mm -hmm. I think I can I think I can and and it takes that kind of attitude and that's the practice of artful living to be to keep looking forward to other things to come, even though they're not happening. I've had some struggles with my abstracts lately uh, because I've sort of put into the work that I know I want to compositionally using the elements of composition and shapes and contrasts and movement. And then then I, I've lost some kind of rhythm in it and I don't know why. And mm-hmm. I have to go back and just go back to simple, something more simple go back to just seeing, being in nature, looking, drawing a black and white sketch, you know, and I, and I thankfully have these tools that are simplified things to, to look at um, the world around me more simply, one word or, you know, one stroke and limiting strokes is something I teach. Uh, so that so, maybe we become aware of it. It, it sounds like uh, another crossover between, you know, actually the actual practice of art and uh, artful living again. I mean, that term comes up again. If, if we're up against uh, what seems like an insurmountable challenge or something that's really difficult, that what you're talking about is almost re- kind of resetting your expectations or simplifying your, your uh, you know, the tools that you might have at hand or the, you know, the mental cognitive tools you have at hand to, to tackle something and then kind of reapproaching it to, uh, to, to move forward, but finding a way to move forward and not, get, not feel that you're stuck. Yeah, I think that's that's the key to that. How do we look for new ways? And usually they say simplify, right? So what again, it takes your own creative introversion to look inside what how does that look for you? Because it looks different for different people. It would, it would. Janet, I'd like to hear about um, what you feel about the statement uh, or, or kind of the, the, the flip side to when I say there's art is everywhere. Um, and you and I have talked about how we believe that art is in all of us. Um, yeah. so I think we essentially, touch on that a little bit, but you know. I think essentially it's that we have the potential to do more than we ever think we can. And, um, and so it takes a lifelong journey to be open to learning about ourselves, learning what excites us and, and or doesn't and what, who, who we are and what we can bring from within. And I think as a human, we have so many aspects. We're much more complex than just skin and bone, right? We have um, this ability to sense things, you know, intuition and um, a spirit in us and our soul that 
can come alive through art. We, we experience this, people cry in front of a Rothko painting that's this huge mass of color. How does that, you know, how does it do that? So we're, art, right from day one, I knew art did something. People's finished product, but the way they lived and watching them live well and figure out life in all circumstances has fascinated me. And not that I, I know, you know really anything about that except my own experiences, but I've learned so much over the years in that, that that's where I know that there's something in me that I can keep bringing out. And either art does it or um, joy is being, you know, out there and, and enjoying things that, that are um, even sports and family and pets and, you know, all these things just bring a little light to different areas within us that we can express and we learn different ways to express it. And I think that's where we communicate with each other uh, in, a, in a deeper level. And so what is that inside us? How do we stir it out? Now, art does, art making does that and, and sharing art, speaking about it, speaking about our stories, but those are our art forms. So I think everybody's story is important and, and something that you know, I think we can trust will will keep us going forward in making art. And so it's in us. It's, uh, each one of us has has that ability. Yeah. I think we're afraid to. You know, we want to keep it simple. We're but uh, everybody uses that word afraid. We're always afraid. That's the worst thing that keeps us holding us back. But it's not so much fear. I don't think we even realize. I don't think we think we have we have the potential. So I, I just like to say that we do have the potential, and I just tell myself that when I feel. Like I don't have anything inside and see what happens. Well, we also, we've also talked, you and I have talked about the, uh, um, oh, hang on, I just lost where I was going with that. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about uh, art, isn't, art isn't all of us. Oh yeah, but I'll go back to what I said before about how we, we so often rely on artists to provide the art in our lives. So we, we go about our lives busy, busy, busy. Um, and we, we, some of us are lucky enough to, to realize that we can at least uh, embrace or engage in art as 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 a uh, for respite for comfort for to help us understand the world um, but yeah we, we often don't think or it's not common to think that we we have creativity in us that we are in, that we are performing our artistic tasks or artistic creative tasks um, in in many of the things we, we encounter in the world so yeah there's there's that internalization of of uh, of artfulness that does open things up, open up possibilities. And then I always had this um, interest in what, what people call the muse, the muse visiting, right? The so muse? The muse, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it makes sense to me that this is outer entity, but I think it's something that is also within us and starts to communicate with this muse that she does or he or she does come and joins us in these creative ventures. And um, to be open to that, I think this, it's, it, it just takes, um, I think, practice to say, you know, I think I, I have this, what do I have inside and how, how and have some time to, to listen to your heart and, 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 and silence sometimes can be good. You know, we think we always have to be fed, but I think if we, which always good to, to do that too, but. I, I just noticed uh, in our in the chat window as I was looking that uh, one of our attendees said that I, I also think during this time of COVID there is a time of stillness that we can learn from and I think that's what you're just getting at um, that by slowing down or by listening to our in, what's inside us um, because it, it can be pretty noisy uh, unless we take that time to, to listen um, that there's there's a chance to, to learn and to grow. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that. You mentioned the words that we held up. I, I still, I still have mine from opening night. Those of you who were, who were here on uh, our, our launch launch uh, session, uh, all the artists participating in the event held up their word, what art meant to them. And uh, but we didn't really have a chance to kind of pick that apart. Why passion, Jane? Well, I've always, I think, been uh, very pleased when I, I feel an exuberance or joy. And that comes from unexpected places, uh, two colors vibrating against each other as they spill along the canvas or something like that. 
and that's why I put mine in color. They did their own thing there, and and so I've I've learned that when when I get this exuberance or joy, that's what I really am passionate about. And to, to hope to spur that or liven that in others too. That's why I think my work, nature presents it. This is called nature rejoices. And it's the expression that I felt nature was telling me, even in its solemn gray days, it seems to have this life that um, I, I feel, you know, we can live as well. And we're connected to that. And so express it how, how how you know some might might write about it somebody might hug the tree somebody might plant a tree somebody may do something with the the wood of the tree you know it, it's just there, there's a there's something that can grab us to enliven us i call that passion that we can we can discover does and, that does that if you're if your passion meter you yeah. know jumps up at a certain something you see or something you do does that guide what you do next well i remember it at least that it's possible again that that back to the possibilities that that it is possible that that something will alive it if i give it a chance you know it's not always immediate it might take some time to revisit good things and 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 look after even myself like it's interesting how trying to live well you know eat properly sleep properly uh, <laughs> <laughs> not that it's in perfection, but all of that, putting that into my life helps the passion come again in, in some area, whether it's even just to see somebody else's success, you know, and, and to see passion around us. It, it's helpful and it's, it's, it's inspiring. So I think that's why you said that. Passion. When I, when I, the word, uh, bliss, the, the word bliss, I could become blissful in it. Yes, so, yes. So, but, <laughs> They're, they're, they're kind of related, I guess. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the bliss part is, is that kind of state of mind I go into. Um, it's a bit like when I'm out sort of immersed in, in nature, if I'm on a hike or I'm out fishing somewhere, uh, there is this, you know, everything goes away, you know, the good and the bad. It's just, it just, it just everything kind of just becomes the art or the, the, yeah. the vision or the seeing. And I, I just, I have a physical... Uh, reaction to that it's it's uh, it's amazing uh, and yeah when I'm when I'm making art or, or out there with my camera or crafting something away it's uh, it's fantastic fantastic what do I wanted to ask you Grant about yeah. deconstruction of your work you mentioned something about you break what's that quote on your uh, uh, I like to I like to something about breaking uh, Images or breaking break, breaking my art so I can play with the pieces. Yes. Or breaking photography. Um, yeah, I'm. This that kind of touches a bit on on the multidisciplinary work that I do. Um, I've I've started literally cutting apart photographs and turning them into something else that echoes the original photograph, but it has become something else. It's a transformation. Um, I'm. Uh, a self-proclaimed rule breaker and just trying, <laughs> trying new things. And when, and, and part of it is sort of stepping back from uh, expectations and rules and guide and guidelines and, and deciding what works for me and being okay if it doesn't work. Uh, so you don't feel bliss then when it doesn't work, but it's the times that you felt maybe a, a blissful feeling about the result or the process uh, the process, and, and interesting you should mention that because I, I was thinking about th that balance between or that relationship between process and, and product. Uh, so often we think of, uh, you know, I'll use paintings as, as an example, that we think that is art. But again, with this artful living kind of philosophy, the art has been happening for months and years, not, and not just the painting of that art, but the, the living uh, uh, the research, the, the trial and error, all the things that were going on in the studio in this, in this artist's life. So there's way more art that is actually happening before that painting goes on the wall. And then the art disappears until the next painting shows up. And that's really just a physical uh, manifestation or physical uh, end result of actual art. Uh, so and I think that's also a, a bit of a misconception around art or it's part of the mysticism or the lack of understanding people have about, about art, I think. Yeah, and, that it needs to produce something tangible where in fact the whole 
process. The process is art. That's there's, the art there is, I think, way more fascinating. Uh, when I hear a, a, a really crazy, uh, you know, electronic thumping house music uh, song that I, that I, you know, which is a genre I really like these days, I, I'm thinking about that composer, that artist, and the, the broken pieces that they've put together into, yeah. a, into a piece that is not traditional, it's not uh, soothing in the traditional sense, but they've, they've tried something bold and pushed their, pushed their medium, pushed their genre uh, to its edge and then broken it and pushed and kept going. And and it's interesting. I, I admire that. I really yeah, do. and it inspired your work then. You see that the totally. collaboration there of, of music, and it's interesting, it's music for you too. Um, I've enjoyed theater in the same way, the movement of, of um, you know, uh, musical theater or, or, or uh, dance and, and, and taking that in to sort of the way I move my brush. So all of these kinds of things mingle. It's like a, uh, making a fabric that, you know, my art then starts to, to be presented on. And um, it's just so nice to be able to realize that it is the process, you know, it's more about there, that's the big cliche, you know, enjoy the process, not the product. But what does that process look like? That's what we're trying to sort of bring mm -hmm. out and ask uh, our our listeners too. For you, for for them, what what are those things? Maybe write them down. Like you said, you had a journal. Um, it can be little flip books. I like these little, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> quickly tear out a page. I don't didn't like, but the ones I like, I go back to, and it and it re reignites some other, uh, you know, avenue to to explore. And, and maybe play with. I like how you break it and then you play. And I wanted to really um, express that I feel play is such an important part of the process of living artfully. We forget to play. Totally. And everything feels serious. We have to make it award-winning or... Well, and I just noticed... Frameable. Uh, I just noticed Chris wrote in the chat that rules okay. stifle creativity creativity, and, and leads to sameness. Um, yeah, when, when we're talking about play, I mean, there are games that one plays within rules, so everyone's playing fairly, but isn't it way more fun? Doesn't it feel way more adventurous yeah. playing where the rules are like, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, we're going to end up with things that no one else has ever thought of before. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris, for, for adding that. So, so that comes to the point about, you know, is there really new art or, or, or uh, how, how do you want to speak on on yeah newness of, of we talked we talked about influence and uh, creativity and originality didn't we once before um i mean I, i've heard it said that everything is a mashup um, <laughs> and and you know there's there's no new art anymore i don't know about that um yeah. but i i embrace the the idea that the, everything that i've seen and done and heard the people i've met um influence what i do um, there's a, a street photographer, I think he's out of New York, named Jay Mizell. Some of you might know, know of him. He was asked once, how do I take more interesting photographs? And his response was, become a more interesting person. Yeah. And it wouldn't mean that in an insulting way, yeah. but you know, to be yeah. more, <laughs> more observant about life and to engage in, in the world, don't be an outsider so much. Um, and I, I think that would apply to many different uh, uh, art forms and, and creative ventures is to to make your make your life interesting and diverse and the outcome as a creative will will be influenced. Yeah, and, and I recall Gordon Smith, um, the late Gordon Smith, that's a wonderful expressive painter, artist, that mm -hmm. taught many people um, to believe that they're an artist. He's the one that I think that coined that we're all artists, you know, and and to believe in that and and he, he always had something good to say about uh, the children's work. And, and I think that's what I have discovered. Teaching children has taught me way more than I teach them because I see how they're willing to give into, you know, whatever into their work and, and aren't, are, don't have a lot of things they're trying to please uh, or put into to boxes. Of, they're not trying to prove anything. No. And, yeah. and, so it, it becomes more authentic and I, I realize what does that you know mean for our process it, it's their own they're, they're you know they, they might try to copy sort of a a, a style they've liked and, and I and I when I've seen that I say well that looks very good you're, you 
you know, to, to be able to do that style. Now, what, what other thing can you add to it that you feel is just completely different out of the ordinary to see, to explore, to have fun, to play? You're giving them permission to, yeah. to break the rules. Yeah. Awesome. It's, a, it's just nice to see what comes from that. And then they, then they feel that they don't have to, at first I noticed they try to please me, like to, to figure out that I might say, oh, this is well drawn or this is- mm. uh, This is a good piece of art. art. And, and I've never tried to look for that. I've tried to look at the fact that they've brought something that, that, that is their own. And uh, it's interesting that even when they couldn't speak English, a lot of the children might have just been immigrated or refugees that came to the class that's art, that actual using their hands and materials uh, in a free way allowed them to feel welcomed and, mm. and to feel that they had something to contribute when they couldn't really speak the language or, or feel a part of it, that the art was able to make them feel um, as part of a community. So I see art just doing so much or, or the process of just being free to express um, and then, and, and you know, allowing people to do that, to, to help them find out who they are and move forward. We can all learn from that. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that some students, some children have had you, had you as, a, as okay. a guide in that. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I wanted to touch on something that uh, I learned about, for, for, about you uh, um, a couple of months ago. Um, you've been very busy as, as your, oh, yeah. <laughs> your connection, your, your, your contact info in, in the chat room indicated. Um, I want to hear about this book that you oh, yeah, okay. have, have published. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. And it's funny, it, it was written very quickly. It's called The Purposeful Brush. And I, I wrote it to, to present and, and explain sort of my process. It's like, what do I do? What, this could help my students. If, if I would just say, look for something, you know, it starts off with, you know, we can all... Uh, anyone can paint, yes, even you, all it takes is a brush and a purpose. The purpose can be many things, of course, and often starts as a desire to capture something or someone in a certain way, but it can also be play, expression, liberation, and revelation. In fact, for many artists, exploring the way they paint is an essential path to creativity and their unique style. It can also be a lot of fun, and it continues on. But I started to just write simple words, you know, open your eyes, to possibilities and, and included my artwork. Look for something that touches the heart and walk and little things you can continue to do. Um, I say pray because I think that part of that inner spirit is interesting to explore, stay and, and just be with the the place or the thing that you'd like to express and then start you know and it this could be a simple drawing and then i go into painting techniques like load the brush and and ways to paint and things that correlated to other um things like uh conducting an orchestra <laughs> um so a lot of these i mean I, I read through that that book and you're right a lot of those pages contain maybe one word or four or five words they're very, uh, your, your approach there reminds me a bit of the permission you give, gave to those chil your, the children that you've worked with. Yeah. Just to kind of nudge them forward um, and open their eyes, open up their, the possibilities of, of what they, they can do. And, you know, just very simple sort of first steps. Yes. And then, there's, then to build momentum, it sounds like, uh, I'm sure anyone who kind of reads that book or these children who are in your classes, um, are just going to build momentum as they get that those kind of prompts and those those nudges nudges forward. Yeah, and that's sort of what I'm hoping for that to do. But all of our artwork and all of our lives, if we live artful lives, can do that. Mm -hmm. Match people to do the same. Look inside and you know, look for what is good or what excites us and where we can find the passion. It could be like to ride up a bike. I find these bikers that go up Cypress Mountain with their bikes all the way up. I, I don't know how they do it, but you know, it's a passion of theirs and something mm -hmm. spurred them on. And, and so to enliven that in us and, and if our art can do that or the way we live, then I think that's what we're here for. I think we need each other for that. And art is a, the best way to do it. So find what's, what you're passionate about. This is, this is the call to action I'm putting out to you guys. Find what okay. you're passionate yeah. about. Um, 
you know, find what gives you bliss and yeah. figure out why it's doing that and do more of it. Uh, yeah. um, and uh, I think, I think you're, you'll be uh, better for it or your life. I, I say that life won't necessarily make you live longer, but it'll make your life better. And that's um, the purpose. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be a big purpose. It's all this thing about purpose. Yeah. Like, like yeah. my purposeful brush is just to pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But to, to have a, a, a vision or a, another little journey or an adventure forward. It's always yeah. a journey. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, the people that are listening um, might have a story themselves that they want to uh, share and, and on, on how they have kept going uh, and what has maybe inspired us. Can... Well, why don't, we, why don't we open up the floor a little bit? I mean, you and I could talk about this stuff <laughs> for hours, and we have, um, but if you guys uh, in, the, in, the, in our viewing audience here, um, have a, a question you'd like to, to put out to us or if there's something that we've mentioned that has kind of sparked something in you that you'd like to kind of get off your chest or, or if you think it's all nonsense um, yeah, it's you, can, okay. you can keep your mute button on yeah. if you think it's nonsense uh no but we'd love to hear from you guys so if there's if you want to you know put your hand up or if i notice that your your mic button has been come unmuted i'll know that you're about to to talk but we'd love to hear from you guys well there's some new messages here I'll just go and add one thing, um, yes, Grant. Please. So it's Chris. I write. I, I write here. Um, you and me had mentioned something about about how you know you you how you had had this life uh, coach. You know, that actually mentioned. Um, you know, mentioned mentioned to you, and you know, you were sorry. Yeah, you were you were actually mentioning about about this life uh, coach. How how he or she had actually kind of you know uh, removed the shell, or you know, or opened you up. Um, which I thought I thought we, I was actually an interesting uh, point. I, I actually attend, attended a, a creative uh, photography uh, workshop um, a year, year and a year and a half, half ago, and, and I was an extremely rigid photographer. Um, and it was a really, really tough, tough workshop. The first, you know, couple of couple of days, it was like all these rules I had were all just being trashed. But I let that go, and, and actually I joined it, and and it's been really, 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 really cool so I, I think think it is an important thing you know that we actually think think to ourselves are we being held you know back by self-imposed um rules or self-imposed um, beliefs in, and what is actually art so i think that's just an important thing we should definitely evaluate that and it, and it takes that sort of asking of asking that of yourself and and your ears will perk up if you hear conversations around that topic around you and engage in those conversations, figure it out. There's no one answer to it. Um, yeah, thanks, Chris, for, for mentioning your experience there. Uh, anyone else have something they want to, uh, to ask Jane or me? Um, I'll ask a question. Um, Jane, uh, or anyone else who might have an idea here, uh, but I wanted to ask you, Jane, what, do you, what would you say to someone or what is your reaction when you hear people say, oh, I'm not very artistic? <laughs> I love that one. I actually thought about that when I'm painting out there and people come by and say, my great aunt's friend loved to paint. You know, <laughs> and They're like, that's so far removed. Like in my head, I'm thinking, well, what do you love to do? Where do you find your joy? Hmm. And I might even ask them that, but, um, you know, I, I just say, really, I think we can all find something to be excited about. And, you know, perhaps you're enjoying your walk today and that's art too. And I do try to sort of put a, a light onto things, the process, the life, artistic, creative living, mm -hmm. being open to the possibilities of, of having exuberance, passion, bliss, I think that's artful living. If you if you look for those things, seek those things, um, and yeah, yeah. Then, then you're an artist. <laughs> yeah, and and there, I mean, there's artist with a capital A, and that's what yeah. everyone else. That's what everyone. That's what everyone thinks artists are. But you guys, just by being here, have kind of shown us that you you're kind of willing to to uh, broaden that and. Uh, uh, and you kind of—it sounds like I'm hoping that you kind of get what we mean when we use the word art and artist much more generally. Um, Lee's, I believe, is your name. Can you un? Here, I'm gonna. Yeah, can hey, you Lise. unmute your oh, mic? No. Yeah, got to unmute your mic there. Uh, there we go. Hi, Lee's. Yeah, hi. Oh. Uh, hi, uh, 
uh, uh, just to mention, actually, I uh, I uh, know uh, Jane uh, because of the COVID-19. I entered in the art group, and I saw her book, the book she just presented, and I bought her book, and we became friends from like this, and uh, I have her book at home. It's, uh, it's on my, my, my table where I play, and uh, it's there, so we, uh, uh, every day I open the uh, a page and uh, I, let, I let myself inspire just just uh, look at one of her paintings. I just want to look at it and I, I let myself uh, inspire on that. Uh, uh, can you hear me uh, correctly? You're, you're uh, muted. I don't have... You're muted, Grant. Okay. It, it is, it is kind of hard to hear you, Lise. Do you go a little closer to your mic, maybe? Thanks. Can you like this? That, Can you hear me better? That is yeah. better. Thank you. Okay, I just cut off, cut off the, the Bluetooth. Uh, I, I, I wanted to say something about... Uh, I, I did like so much what Jane just said uh, before. Uh, for me, I just want to say it, um, it's my life. Every day my life is like this. It's like all my art are really rely, reliable altogether. Just for example, today, my, uh, I, I, I was playing ukulele and singing with a student in a, in a boutique, in our own boutique. And um, since I, 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 I teach her ukulele, she keeps the ukulele in the, in the, in the boutique. And when a customer comes and asks for a, for a song, and she 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 sings, and uh, they 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 come and come. But after that, um, at the re request of um, a, a Facebook uh, fan, I had to go in the same town and get some photography of uh, of the the lighting there because uh, um, uh, my my photography are so popular that. People ask that if they last week they saw like an, an example of the other park that I took the picture of, and uh, they all said, "We want the other. We want the." the. I told them that there was some um, uh, another place, so they just wait for that. But after that, I photograph that I finished photography. Oh, it's so uh, it's well uh, the ambiance is so uh, great and the snow, everything, I have to walk. So walking is another thing uh, doing with, with that. And like um, I, like Jane, I know she, she likes to go hiking and she paint in the mountain, but like I do, uh, I do something like this too. It's like uh, during the weekend, I went in snowshoes and um, I was thinking of myself, why the people, what do we think about this girl walking in with with blue snowshoes but as we, actually everybody like was coming to me to talk to me and even a, a, a little boy 10 years he said to his mother i know her she teaches to my school she teaches music to my school to my school and, and then Famous. when i come home yeah, it never stopped because i want to continue my my painting and um like, just to, to finish to conclude uh, right now, I'm doing, uh, I started to give uh, music lessons online. And actually, the father of, of this little girl that is in my family, sh she wants to become an artist too. And the first time she entered in my house, she said, it was a, a first time putting the, 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 the feet in the, the living room. She said, are you an artist? I said, I think so. She said, that's what I be. I want to be later. I want to become an artist. Really inspiring. And uh, I, I gave her a painting as a gift. <laughs> and it, it happens that I get, now I give her uh, guitar lessons online. And today his father, um, uh, well, came on Messenger, sent me a picture of a painting that uh, the other children, they made together. And now his father too, is uh, he's drawing, painting, and all the family That's is cool. just enjoying it. And he said, "This is so relaxing." <laughs> so relaxing. So we so there you go. Circle. Circle. Yeah. It's it's never, yes, proud. it's a big, big circle. It never ends. It's over and over, right? Yeah. It's something you want to paint. 
Yes. Again and again. Well done, Lise. You've, nice you, you've had a big impact. You've had a big impact on multidisciplinary. You know, you got the photography yeah, in there, music, exactly. painting. So good for you, Lise. I'm glad you're doing that and keep inspiring people with your all your work. At the Thanks. Yes, I, 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 I think I that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? We're, we're pulling up to 8:30. Does anyone else have anything you'd like to share? Grant, I think Ron had a question. Ron, did you have a question? Uh, I don't know that there's a uh, I was just going to ask ah. both of you, uh, Grant, mm -hmm. I know you go out and stand under street lights to look for inspiration. Yes. Uh, and, and that is deliberate now, whereas before it might have been an accident. <laughs> I don't know whether you hike uh, to locations with specific objects in mind. Your art in both cases has evolved over a long period of time. So when you go out now, are you more focused on a specific project or idea when you go out or are you open to whatever shows up uh, in your uh, experience on that particular occasion? Thanks, Ron. Can I, can I say both? Um, Cause I, I will, I will uh, head out with particular images in mind. A lot of the work I'm doing these days is uh, sort of composite uh, photography using Photoshop a lot, uh, but using all um, as much photographic content as I can. I'm, I'm not generating anything new using the software. I'm, I'm playing and layering and telling stories with my, with my art. So I will go out uh, sometimes with a particular vision in mind about how I want to see a, a group of elements come together and I might not have element A, so I have to go and get it. Uh, but I, during those outings, I, I do Oh, I am open to uh, shooting or capturing what I come across at the time. So it, it's, it really is a blend. Most often, however, I'm just out with the camera looking and enjoying and seeing. So it's not all serious, uh, you know, head down, focused on a particular project every single time. It, it does kind of fluctuate depending on what I'm up to. And I think that's a practice of artful living. Again, you're open to that, whether you go out and purposefully go paint something like I would be to go paint something something else might happen and and to be willing to let that happen gather more mm -hmm. why not yeah um Alberto you have I see a hand there uh, uh, Grant. um nice to see you um, me too I, I think that it's um Art is very, very uh, good in these times. Um, it's very relaxing. It takes uh, our minds away from all the problems, all the um, uh, difficult times that we're living. And um, I'm my work now, it's um, similar to, to yours in the way that I use a lot of um, uh, Photoshop as well. Uh, and as well, it's not to create something new. It's just that um, I, I have something in mind. I take my, my photos and then I, <clears throat> I remove from, from that uh, original um, uh, file what I believe it's not uh, adding anything to, to the final um, uh, piece. So uh, it gives me the time to be uh, kind of mindful at the time that I'm taking the, the, the photographs. And then on top of that, it gives me the time uh, for um, being completely away from any other problem or any other thing that is in my mind uh, when I'm in, in front of my computer. So. Um, I think now uh, it gives me um, double benefit um, to to use uh, these uh, digital um, images, and um, it, as I said, it's very very relaxing. It's uh, wonderful, especially for for these uh, difficult times. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that you're using new new uh, materials, it's Photoshop yes. and uh, computers, you know, there, I, I believe there will always be something for us to use and to yeah. create with. And I and think that's tools, what, right? They're, they're yeah. tools. And so it's really great to hear that no matter what you have around you, you're able to have 
used it for a benefit of, of artful living, I call it, you're, you're, you're doing exactly that. When I, um, I started painting uh, many, many years ago when I was a kid and, uh, and then when computers started, um, I, I remember I started using, uh, at that time it was Corel uh, yeah. photo paint and um, uh, I can't remember if it was uh, Adobe Illustrator as well that I was using. And I said, oh, this is perfect. I can use uh, the computer as my new uh, uh, media, but but then I completely uh, forgot about it. And then now that I uh, took it back, um, it, it's been a, it's been a wonderful tool. It's it's just an, another tool that you can add to uh -huh. to your uh, to your art. Yeah, I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing Al Alberto's uh, art, and we've even gone on a few photo walks together and and. Uh, I'm so glad you're here, Alberto. Um, any, anyone out there, any of the others uh, who are here tonight, uh, I hope you've, you find the, the, the tools and the raw materials uh, and the, the inspiration to kind of all go together uh, to, to build on for your own, your own path. Thanks, Alberto. Um, Lise, hi. Got to ask, I'm going to ask you to unmute one more time. Okay, okay. Uh, I have in my mind since the beginning of the, the conference and uh, certainly as, uh, since you just mentioned something, I must really say that uh, people close of me, they, they, they often uh, tell me, uh, Liz, you, you are a, a true artist. You are an artist in, uh, in, in, your, in yourself, in your, um, in your being. And the, the, the thing, uh, the example I, I, I want to, to uh, say is that when I do uh, um, some, uh, some, when I cook uh, my, my pastry, my pastry is like some food, and I, it starts from me, it starts from there in the morning. When I put my oil, olive oil in the pan, I put my olive oil and I saw a form arriving in my pan, and 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 sometimes I did uh, post it on Facebook. Those and people was what? Yes, something. L last weekend, oh, I boy. I made chicken with my mother, and when we 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 uh, take out the the chicken, we saw on the paper that is a parchment paper. All those spots, it was all like art. Art was was there. And I took yeah. this and I post, I posted in my in in, in my uh, group art group, and it said, "My these you you see really art everywhere, but this is this is uh, my life. It's this like it's like this. I see that every morning. I can wait to see what will be the form in my farm with oily voice. <laughs> we could all. You're making me hungry and yes. curious <laughs> at the same time. Thank you, Lise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everyone, we've. Again, just like Jane and me, when we get together, um, it sounds like we could continue sharing stories. And Jane and I are actually totally happy to stick around a little longer if anyone does want to chat or, or ask a few more questions. For those of you who have, uh, for all of you who have come tonight, we, we thank you very, very much. Um, and uh, we hope to hear from you if, you if you've made note of our contact information. Uh, definitely reach out, check us out on, on our social media, ask, you know, just connect. We'd love to, love to hear from you again. Um, Jane, is there anything you, any kind of one last thing you'd like to, to say before we sign off officially? Well, I guess the, the word creativity, you know, it's a big, big word, but I just wanted to say that I think that's the same as uh, be, have, living artfully is open to this creativity, which is impossible to define in words, but I think it's a mysterious thing that we can try to explore and experience. And to me, it's a flow of purpose that we is a is something that um, we can all share. And so, may may creativity be with you in your in your daily lives and in whatever way that that uh, it, it presents itself. And may it bubble up in you your art. So that's just I want to thank you for listening. And may it be um, ongoing 
passion for you as well. Jean, I cannot top that. No, sorry. That is fantastic. Just your picture would be great. I love your photography. Honestly, it moves me. It's it's bold. It's adventurous. It has stories. Um, so oh, do I'm check honored. out Grant's uh, work on, on his website. Uh, I love the Mondrian um, oh, yes. uh, influence. Uh, we could talk about that too, deconstruction of grid. It's something that inspired my work. So it, we, we all inspire each other. You've inspired us tonight to be able to share um, our words with you. And uh, we hope that you will do that amongst each other as well. You know, that's why we have um, social media or, or just a phone call or whatever. And I appreciate all your, your artistic lives as well. So thank you. So take the message out into the world and spread it, spread it around, yeah. put, your, put your work out there and uh, yeah, enjoy an artful life. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, sign off officially for now. Um, yeah, thank you, Jane and Grant. And I just uh, wanted to, uh, well, thank you very much, both of you. That was, I think, very inspiring. I think we can see the chat okay. going, but I just wanted to also let folks know that, uh, you know, Stride is going on for another a uh, few days until January 30th. And we have uh, a lot more coming up your way uh, in the same way of inspiring talks. Uh, we have uh, another talk with Caroline Sullivan, who is here somewhere with Bill Thompson. They, that one is coming up on the 22nd, which is Friday. Then, uh, then we have a, a panel where we're gonna discuss the, the role of arts in the education system. And that's gonna be on the 28th. And we invite you to attend that as well. And then Grant and myself are gonna be part of another talk with Caroline on the 29th. So those are all online, um, you know, artist talks and we hope everybody can join. And of course we have our ongoing, uh, you know, events that we have going on where we visit, you, we invite you to visit the art displays and the art installations. And there's a soundtrack mural tour. So there's so much going on. Please check out our website and I hope to see you uh, in some of these other talks or, or events. Um, thank you. Thank you very much to both of you. And thank you, Suvi, for all the technical support. Yeah, Suvi, Suvi at North Burnaby Neighborhood House and, and Jun Wen, who's my partner in crime in the bigger uh, community art world. Um, she's my, my co-chair for the, uh, the Arts Committee for, the, for Stride. So thanks for joining us tonight, Jun Wen, and for those that plug for the rest of the, the festival. Mm. Enjoy the rest of uh, Stride, everybody, and thanks so much for coming tonight. It's been a pleasure. And Jane and I will be linger around for a little longer if anyone wants to, to hang for a bit. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. <laughs>